Amen. That, that amen is not so sure. Amen. amen. Is that a sister? Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Oh, your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running out. Is running after me. Your goodness is running out. Is running after me. With my life laid out, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running now. Is running after me. One of the evidences to know that. God's goodness is running after us is because you can hear me. It's because you can see me. It's because you can sing. It's because you hear actual, uh, either virtual, virtual or physical. That's, that's an evidence of God's goodness. That's an evidence. You know, I just want us to thank God this morning. Say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for being good to me. Thank you for allowing your goodness to follow me everywhere, chasing after me, running after me. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Always running, always running after me. Always running after me. Always running after me. Always running after me. Thank you for your goodness. Running after me. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Oh God, your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Oh, oh your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Oh. Your goodness is running out, running after me. Your goodness is running out, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful, oh God. All my life you have been so, so good. Every prayer that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. I will see of the goodness of God. I will see of the goodness of God. I will see. Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Father, we thank you this morning. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to us. Even when we don't know it, you've been so good to us. You've been exceptionally good to us. And we are grateful. We are grateful. All our life, you've been so good. That we are still here today. You've been so good. In spite of our unanswered prayers, our inadequacy, our unfaithfulness, you've been so good to us. We confess that you've been so good to us. We see your goodness everywhere. Every now and then, every day that we wake up, it's your goodness, and we are grateful. So, dear Lord, we ask this morning, as we have come before you, please, Lord, speak your word unto our lives, and let your word revive us. Let it restore us. Let it do the unimaginable things in our lives. Thank you, mighty Father. 
In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I want to welcome everyone this morning into God's house, uh, both virtually and in physical. I welcome everyone, and especially I want to welcome my, my cousin who is worshiping with us today. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, it's not, I, I'm not, I'm not, it's not my cousin, cousin. I mean, it's my blood cousin. So it's my cousin. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. And um, everyone that has been, you know, uh, faithful with your payment of tithe and offering, we are grateful because that's, that's, that's what the church uh, gets to run with, uh, both people watching us online and people that are here physical. Thank you for being faithful with, you know, your tithe and offering. Uh, that's what is used to move the work of, of the kingdom forward to the glory of God. And then we've been studying seasons and reasons. And then this month, it's like I, 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 don't, I don't want to end this series because it's, it's getting deeper, but we, we, have, to, we have to end it. Uh, my wife spoke about the evening season last week. How many, how many of us enjoyed the last week's sermon? How many of us enjoyed the last sermon? You know, sincerely, I, I had to listen to that message about three times during the week. And then, um, and you know, the, the fact is I'm proud of myself, you know, that I, I was able to bring that, bring that which people have not seen out of my wife. So uh, I, I yanked it out. Um, sincerely, I've, I've, not, I've not seen her preach like that in a long time. Since, but I just, I just kept pushing. And then, especially the way she started. I, I may have saw the way she started someone last week. I feel, I feel as if I shouldn't even be preaching again. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I still have to do God's work. So today we'll be doing the night season. We've done the morning season. We've done the afternoon season. We've done the evening season. And then we did, there was a time we spoke about the value of time. There was a time we spoke about finishing strong. So today we'll be doing the night season. The night season. The night season is from age 76 upward. So, but the irony about life is this. Some people, their night season ends in the morning. Some people, their night season comes in the afternoon. Some people, their night season comes in the evening. So people that are just, they're just getting up for the first time, uh, morning season is from age 0 to 25. Afternoon season is from 26 to uh, 50. Uh, the evening season is from 50 to 75. And night is from 76 upward. So, when we say night season, it's a season when everything starts slowing down or you slow it down. Two ways. So, it's either you slow things down or it slows you down. Like, uh, like our general overseer, Pastor Yadeboe, back in the days when I was still very young, we could do program from night about morning time, about 6 a.m., and it will be standing for hours. So now, it just clock 81. <laughs> Sometimes you even sit down to preach to someone, and God still do miracles. So he has to slow things down. He's still doing the work of God, but certain things can be done. And that's what happens. And that's why we need to take advantage of the seasons of our lives, because there's a particular season you might not be able to do what you're supposed to do in the previous season. The strength can be compared. My late father likes farming a lot. When, when he was still much more younger, my father could, could do a lot of heaps in his farm. But when he grew much older, over 50, getting 18, 60 and over, he has to slow it down. He has to get people to do it for him. Or probably he can't really do so much. Sometimes he just do it in a very short while. Very short. Very short time. And, and, and it withdrew. And that's what happens to us. So, evening season, uh, sorry, night season, it's a season where everything starts slowing down. Or you slow it down. Nobody will tell you. But now you see that, maybe you, you, you are carrying about 50 pounds before. But when you get to that point, uh, no, <laughs> let me slow it down. Let me just carry about 5 pounds. I'll be fine with power five pounds. So is, is, that, is that point? It's a time to start preparing for rewards you've not received. 
I told us, I, think I, I, was, I was telling some of us this morning that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So, at that stage, rewards start coming. They have not received over the years. From Google and whatever source, we, we also find that at night season is the time from docks to dawn when no sunlight is visible. When, sun, when, when no sunlight is visible, everything becomes, start dimming down. And that's why people prefer to work in the day. Some people work at night. But people will work in the day because at night it's supposed to be that downtime. Now, both the evening and morning, se- and, and evening and night season, they refer to the time when the sun is setting and the sky is getting dark. However, Evening is short and is right when the sun sets. It is when people finish work and come back home. Night is when the sky is dark and the moon shines bright along with many stars. I, I've seen some people saying that, you know, when some people are about to go home, that's to heaven, they start seeing some stars because they feel that the, 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 the angels in heaven are, are, are about to welcome them home. So, it is very important to understand that uh, it is the one that knows how you came into this world that will, add, that will determine how you go back. Let me repeat that in another word. It is the one that knows our entry into this world that can determine our exits. That's to say, nobody can kill you if it's not time. That God has not uh, that God has approved. So, if anyone hearing me today had been is afraid of death because they somebody have told you that you you will soon die, or they said that uh, in your family people die at a certain age, I'm here to announce to you you can't die before your time. It's not possible. You won't. You won't die. You can never die before your time. The one that brought you into this world, out of all things that scientists have done, they can't determine when a baby comes out of the womb. They say plus or minus. <laughs> so they said they don't know how to do C-section. But they, nobody can determine the exact day. Only God knows. When my first daughter wanted to come, come in, and um, my my prayer, my desire was that she would come in on my wife's birthday. I was trying to be, be economical, so I was like, okay, so that I won't do birthday two times. <laughs> so that was 27th of March, but she, she just ignored me and came on the 7th of April. Ay, 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 ay. I'm like, why? It's, it's, it's close. I was the end up. So I can't even determine it. It's only God. It's only God. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 8. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning of it. And patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So better is the end. So that ending part is the most important thing. No matter what we have done from the beginning of our lives, that ending part is very important. You might have done so good from the beginning that point is very important. You have to finish it well. And that's why how we end our journey is very, very important. How we end our journey is very, very important. But before I go into some of the things that we're going to look at today on uh, <laughs> that night part, there are three seasons in life that we must experience. I have the season of waiting. Psalm 27, verse 14. 20, Psalm 27, verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart be strong. Yes, wait for the Lord. And then we also read in the book of Psalm 37, verse 7. Psalm 37, verse 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. The season of waiting 
it, it could mean many things to many people in their different circumstances. But it's a season when sometimes you feel you are overdue for a promotion. And God is saying, wait. It could be because he wants you to learn something that you, you thought you, you, you had known before. Just tell you to wait. Just wait. Sometimes you, you think you are, you, are, you are overdue to get married. And God is saying, wait. Maybe because you have a character that uh, you could mess up marriage. I remember when I was trying to get married, I, I thought I was going to get married at, at age of 25. And God says, wait. For five whole years. Huh? Then it was, it was really, five years, I had to wait. So wait. And it was because it was trying to mold me. It was trying to, you know, prepare me for the journey so that I will not mess up my future. So and the, the most reason God wants us to wait is because of what he has for us in the future is very, very important. So the season of waiting. And everybody go through that season of waiting, no matter who you are. Every one of us has to wait for something. Because our time is not God's time. When people say that, oh, it's getting late. Who told you it's getting late? He's the one that owns the time. He say, they say, Bible said that a day is like a thousand years. One day. So how did that determine when something is late? So it is God. And the way it thinks is not on our level at all. It thinks differently from us. And we now have the season of sowing. Everybody also go through this. If you don't sow, you will not harvest. There is no magic to this. The book of Galatians 6, sorry, the book of, uh, the book of Exodus 11, 6, the book of Exodus 11, 6 says, In the morning, sow your seed, and in the evening, we told, we told not your ends. For you know not which shall prosper, whether this or that, or whether both alike may be good. He's saying that sow your seed in the morning, in the evening. Keep still sowing. We will sow for the rest of our lives. And the harvest will come, but we have to sow. So you cannot reap, you can harvest if you have not sown. So you only harvest when you have sown. And your, your sowing has to be continuous. It's not, it's not like a, a, for the next five years. No, you keep sowing if you want to keep harvesting. The same way, you know, myself and my wife have, have a we have a joke with normally say, whatever we are looking for, we we'll give it. So if I'm looking for encouragement, I will call people. I will send good messages to encourage them. Guess what? I will end up getting encouragement too. The same way if I'm looking for money, I will look for people that, are, that I can give more, more, more money to. And guess what? It has always worked for me. So I, whatever I'm expecting, I try to do it for other people. And God has a way of, of returning in a different way I, don't, I can't even imagine. So when I'm even looking for help, I look for people that are, that, that, that are probably looking for Need, need some help. It, it, it could be financial. It could be, it could be an information. I just want to help. Then the last season that is very important that we go through in life is the season of reward or harvest. Season of reward or harvest. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. At the proper time, at the proper time. So there is a proper time to reap. There is a proper time to harvest. There is a proper time for the reward. Now, the proper time is not for us to determine. The only time we determine is the time we sow. What we will reap, how we will reap, where we will reap, is all to be decided by God alone. So sometimes, I give some things out. And I'm waiting, I'm thinking, I'm waiting. How will, how will God give me, return this back to me? <laughs> and then, uh, I might not get the exact thing, but I'll get something greater. And that is the very dangerous thing about sowing. You don't get the exact thing you sow. You get in multiples. And that's why we have to be careful of sowing 
evil seeds because it also comes in multiples. And then that takes us to the book of Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. Just to go into what we have for, for today quickly. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14. In the evening season, this is what the Bible is saying. He said, all has been heard. The end of the matter is fear God, revere and worship him, knowing that he is, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full original purpose of his creation, the object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment of all inharmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the old duty of every man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. That is the old, that is the end of the old thing. Morning season, afternoon season, evening season, night season. This is the end of the old story. Fear God and keep his commandment. That's all. There's some prayers that we pray sometimes in our lives that we do not need those prayers at all if we only keep God's commandment. God gave you an instruction to do something and then you disobey. And the disobedience lands you on, on a level you don't want to be. So, I'm going to discuss seven points on how to end well. In fact, I will, I will, have, I will, have, I will have named it <laughs> seven ways to die well. Because, okay, I ask this question most of the time. How many people want to go to heaven? How many people want to go to heaven? Okay. How many people want to die? Guess what? We cannot. The only person that, that, that didn't die that went to heaven was who? Enoch. So we will at one day to we will die. Death is a leveler. No matter how rich, how powerful anybody is. When they die, it's either they burn them into ashes or put them down below the ground. That's all. That's the best. And if you do mistake to put anybody into one expensive casket with, with gold, I promise you, <laughs> the thieves will collide or will, will conspire with the people at the, at, the, at the cemetery and they will steal their coffin overnight. And they will cover it back. You never know if anything happened. So that means that this is what we have here. So anyone that is, that is trying to brag about uh, death levels everyone. There is no, there is no uh, rich death and a poor death. It's the same thing. And it's so powerful. So the first way to die well, let me put it that way. Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men. Hebrews 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. I'm reading from the easy to read version. It says, try to live in peace with everyone and try to keep your lives free from sin. Anyone whose life is not holy will never see God. Hmm. Will never see the Lord. Try to... Now, it is worth try. Because there are so many things that will go through in life. So many things people will do to us. It says try. As in put your efforts. Because the grace will be available to you. Try. To follow peace with all men. I was telling some people yesterday in the class. I like to bring equation into teaching sometimes. I studied economics. So, the the... The constant value in the equation, constant K, is that everybody will offend you. Everybody is prone to offending you. The variable C in the equation is that you are the one 
that can dis- determine to be offended or not. When myself and my wife started, uh, we got married, and then we, we began to face the, the reality of, of Christian marriage. <laughs> we have some misunderstanding quarters here and there. Until the Lord opened our eyes, we started seeing some things. And then the things that we'll have said to each other, do to each other before, and we'll get angry. Today, we'll just laugh about it. We'll just say, that I forgive you. We're going to say that somewhere. And that's the end. What happened is that we made decision not to be offended again. And the reason is that what people do to us sometimes, we all see it in different perspective. Like I make a joke last week or somewhere, and I was like, you know, based on, on the way we were, we were brought up in Nigeria, somebody comes to tell you that, uh, why are you mad at me? You're like, you say I'm mad. So it's because of the way that person saw it. So somebody who, who, who grew up here, who understand what that word means, who don't take it as an offense. So, you know, then also, you know, you know it's very hard to find a, a, a proper Nigerian that grew up in Nigeria that doesn't have a loud voice. And some people, yeah, so they, 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 they see that an offense. It, it kind of gets some people offended somehow. Like, oh, why are you shouting? Hold on, hold on, take it easy. <laughs> so it's because the way we all see things is different. But in all of this, the Bible says, try to live in peace with all men, with everyone. Number two, how to die well. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. No matter how good you are on earth, you'll be shocked when you're gone. People might easily forget you. Not because they want to, but because life goes on. Let me get, let me get an example. My father passed on 2018. Went to the uh, bear again, bear and did everything. Since that day, I have not stepped at the bear ground again. No, not because I don't want to, but this way I am. Circumstances have not allowed me. That's life. I want to. But the circumstances surrounding, I don't live there. I, I really want to. And that's what happens to every one of us. We have probably lost one love one or the other. We're going to move on. We're not going to get stuck. And that's why the only place where we can be forgotten is in the book and records of God. And that's why you must serve him more than you serve people. In fact, if you serve God well, people will be, people will be fine. So, he's the only one that he cannot erase your name. And we can say that in the book of John 4, verse 34, Jesus said, my food is to do what the one who sent me wants me to do. He is the one that sent us to this world for a purpose. So we must satisfy him more than anybody. Because at the end of the day, that's the only person who's in the record will be. Some persons, people even died at the very close to them. Not that they are being wicked or forgetful. No, it's not. Let's let, let be sincere. Before you know it, the person's frame on the wall. Let, let's take it off. Let's take it off. Let's take it off. Everybody have moved on. But where your frame can never be removed is in the book of life. Your frame remains there. It will remain there. That's why you must work for that one. That is the eternal reward. People, we are human. Don't blame. We are all human. No matter how loving we are, or we, 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 we are to anybody, circumstances, challenges will come in that you might forget certain people so easily. Not because we are wicked. No, no, no. And then, the third one, 
how to die well. Leave wealth for your family by getting life insurance. The book of Proverbs 13, 22 says, Good people have wealth to live to their, ch- to their grandchildren, but the wealth of the sinners will go to the righteous. M- many people think buying life insurance today is because you want to die. No, it's not because you want, you want to die. It's because you want to secure the future for your family and pass wealth onto them. When people are crying, when they lose a loved one, be careful to know why that tears is coming. That tears could be because of the money they will spend <laughs> for the funeral. <laughs> Two, it could be because they will miss the person a little bit. But usually it's more of, ah, oh, forget to. Ah, why will you go now? <laughs> why will you just go now? Why? Just hold on. I was telling my, my mom, I usually do. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not scared about the death again. No, far, far from it. I told my mom, I said, I said see, look at me. Don't, don't go now. I'm not prepared for you. Better calm down. Enjoy this life very well. Let's, let's do this work, work of God and enjoy life. So calm down. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> not now. But I think I've said it before. The best funeral you can give to anybody is to take care of them when they are alive. So that when, when they are dead, if you choose not to do anything, anybody can be angry, but it's in the book of records. So get life insurance. Get it. Get it. That, that's the way most of these people pass well to their generations. Number four, don't live a secretive life. Be accountable. Do not live a secretive life. Be accountable. James 5.16. James 5.16. It says, then... Uh, so also tell each other the wrong things you have done. Then pray for each other. Do this so that God can heal, heal you. Anyone who lives the way God wants can pray and great things will happen. Be accountable. Don't go and keep some money somewhere. Don't go and keep something somewhere. Hide things somewhere and then, you know, secret not be revealed at the end of the day. It doesn't end well. For the sake of the family. The fifth point, clear all your debts as early as possible. Clear all your debts as early as possible. Proverbs 11.29 Proverbs 11.29 says, Those who cause trouble for their families will inherit nothing but the wind. The reason is because when you leave death for your family, you are putting them in, in some trouble. Then Romans 13, it says that keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to owe love one another. Except, except to love one another. I, I know that the system wants us to be under debt, but let's, let's put the system on how to you know, start clearing our debt as soon as, as soon as possible. Number six, organize your life. Organize your life. No wonder the reality of people. God was telling Israel, put your house in order. Or it makes the it makes the before and after exit easy on your family. It makes it easy. Organize everything in your life. It makes it easy. Some some family go through troubles about clearing the the, the old old things, you know, their their loved ones left when they're gone. It's, it creates some kind of commotion here and there. But if you are well organized, it makes it easy. Colossians, uh, Colossians, uh, first, first Corinthians 14, verse 40. First Corinthians 14, verse 40 says that everything should be done in a way that is right and orderly. Orderly. Order. Organize your life. Then the last thing you want to do be before the night time ends. Make sure you make attempts to have that face-to-face encounter with the one you serve, your master Jesus. Why is nighttime that important? Why is it important to serve the Lord? How do you know who you're serving? Because that's the person you're going to meet at home. But unfortunately, as we read in the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 12, verse 14. He says, anyone whose life is not holy shall never see the Lord. I want us to bow down our heads. The reason why anyone can be afraid of death today is because we are not sure of where we, how we, where we will end our journey. I want you to talk to God. Just pour your heart to God. What are the things you're struggling with? What are the things you're struggling with that you think will not allow you end well? Ask God to have mercy. And if you are listening to me, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ this morning, I just want you to, to, to talk to God and ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him. Tell him, say, say Father, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in you and I convert my sin unto you. Please, deliver me from the hood of sin. Deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me. And if you have said that prayer, just, just make sure you find the Bible in the church. If you are watching it online, but make sure you start doing things that will, you know, order your footsteps to heaven. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we ask, please, Lord, whenever you choose for our night season to come, for our night season to end, whenever, Lord, please, Lord, all that matters to us is that we hang at your feet. Please, whatever you have to do in your capacity as the Almighty God, help us hang at your feet in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. It's time to take our offering. It's time to take our tithe and offering. Our tithe is, I usually little people, at least 10% of your income. Weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. And uh, our offering, Lord, has impressed in your heart. Uh, we have platforms yeah, if you're online, you can see the different ways to give. And then if you are here in church, you can see on the screen. Uh, let's do our offering and let's, let's, let's have a, a danceable song. Let's worship God. Much more than what you are giving, uh, make sure that you, you, are, you are dancing unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna dance and praise him It doesn't matter what comes my way The greater one lives inside of me His name is Jesus I'm born a winner More than victorious I'm a heir of his kingdom Filled with the Holy Ghost, I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. More than a conqueror, I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him More than a conqueror More than a conqueror More than a conqueror Are you more than a conqueror More than a conqueror More than victorious More than victorious 